The Envy 13 doesn't break the boundaries when it comes to design, but it does look good. It's made from aluminium and features an unfussy, sleek body. You don't get fancier features like RGB LEDs, but the HP doesn't look out of place when lined up alongside the Dell XPS 13 and Apple MacBook Air. It's got reasonable connectivity, too. The HP serves up two full-size USB ports that are cleverly hidden behind drop hinges. There's a USB-C port that offers power delivery and 10 gigabits per second file transfers, and there's an audio jack and a micro SD card reader. On the inside, there's dual-band Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. That's entirely fine for everyday use, but there are omissions too. There's no HDMI output, and no Thunderbolt 4 either. In fact, there's not even Thunderbolt 3 as found on the NV13, 2020, as the super speed USB-C port is limited to 10 gigabits per second. Extra USB-C ports would have been welcome, and the USB ports could be faster, too. There's no wired internet and while the HP does have a webcam, it doesn't support Windows Hello for easier login. Build quality is acceptable for everyday use, but this is another area where the HP is ordinary. The base flexes, the keyboard deck bends a bit and pushing the rear of the display causes a little desktop distortion. It's not a disaster, but a sleeve would be prudent if you regularly take the HP out and about. The NV13 is 17mm thick and weighs 1.3kg, which are fairly ordinary figures too, not bad, but easily undercut by competitors. Indeed, the Envy faces loads of strong rivals. The Dell XPS 13 S 11th Gen models start at just £849 and US$729, and that machine is sturdy, slimmer and lighter than the HP, and it has Thunderbolt ports but no full-size USB. The newer Dell XPS laptops start at £1,069 per US$969 and have the same advantages. The MSI Prestige 14 Evo is slimmer and lighter and it does have Thunderbolt, but its build quality is mediocre. The latest MacBook Air is always a contender, too. Prices start at £999 and US$999 and you get its rock-solid chassis alongside similar dimensions to the Envy. Keyboard and trackpad. 1. Soft, comfortable keyboard. 2. Large keys and good backlight. 3. Disappointing trackpad. The keyboard is on the softer side, and that means the buttons are comfortable and quiet, ideal for long typing sessions. They're impressively large and they've got a clear font and a bright, crisp backlight. It's solid mainstream hardware, but the Dell has a crisper design if a keyboard is high up your priority list. It's a good start, but the 13 inches chassis means there's no room for a number pad, and the large buttons means the layout is a bit cramped in places. The power button is installed next to the delete key, and it's irritating, you'll end up pressing it accidentally. The fingerprint reader is slotted next to the cursor keys, two of which are half size, and the return key is only single height. Moving on in the touchpad is mediocre, a little too short and with a plastic surface that's a little too rough. The built-in buttons are soft. For everyday use it's fine, but every key rival is better. Screen and speakers. 1. 13.3 inches IPS touchscreen. 2. Full HD, 16 to 9. 3. Fantastic quality and contrast. The IPS panel on the NV13 has a full HD 1920 by 1080 resolution, which is solid for everyday use. It's a touchscreen, too, which adds versatility. It's a shame that HP hasn't gone with a 1610 or 3 to 2 aspect ratio to deliver some extra height, especially when this machine will so often run web browsers and office apps. The HP's 13.3 inches panel serves up superb quality. The backlight reaches a maximum level of 422 nits, so it's easily got the punch for outdoor work and the black point of 0.21 nits is fantastic meaning loads of depth. The resulting contrast ratio of 2009 to 1 is a stunning figure for any IPS panel and it lends the HP loads of vibrancy and nuance. He delta E of 1.26 means colors are accurate and the panel rendered 97% of the sRGB gamut, although it can't handle the Adobe RGB or DCI-P3 color spaces. The color temperature of 6086 kelvins is on the warm side, but it doesn't cause issues. This screen is the equal of any rival panel and it's good enough for color-sensitive creative tasks. You'll only get a serious upgrade if you spend more cash. The speakers are good enough for everyday music use thanks to a rich mid-range and a top end that doesn't get tinny, but it doesn't have much bass. Specs and performance. 1. 11th Gen Intel Core i5 and i7 CPUs. 2. Up to 16GB RAM and 1TB SSDs. 3. NVIDIA GeForce MX Graphics. 
Unsurprisingly, the HP has a mid-range specification. The key component is the Intel Core i5-1135G7, which is a Tiger Lake CPU with four cores and a peak turbo pace of 4.2 GHz. There's 8 GB of dual-channel memory and a 512 GB SSD while an NVIDIA GeForce MX450 GPU is a nice surprise considering most rivals runs on integrated graphics. The HP's single and multi-core Geekbench results of 1, 37 and 4486 are fine, and they enable solid everyday performance, there's enough power here to run office tasks and loads of browser tabs. It'll run undemanding creative apps, too. It's a good thermal performer, with hardly any fan noise and heat present during benchmarks. There's little the Core i5 part can't do in terms of everyday computing, and its PC Mark 10 score is on par with the results delivered by the Core i7 CPUs in the MSI and Dell notebooks. That's no surprise in those benchmarks, which concentrate on mainstream scenarios. Any of the Core i7 chips in rival machines will add about 1,000 points to that Geekbench result, though, and that'll give you the extra grunt required for tougher content creation tasks. The Apple M1 CPU inside the MacBook Air is even faster. The NVIDIA GeForce MX450 graphics core helped the HP to a score of 13,554 in 3D Mark Knight Raid. That's decent, but it's only a couple of thousand points beyond Intel's Iris Z core. The NVIDIA GPU delivers a bit more speed in casual games and a tad more editing grunt, but it's not a transformative addition.